Hi, and welcome back to my channel for a short series on the Sidekick Dungeon Masters tools provided by Tasha's Cauldron of Everything Source Module for Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. This series will be made up of multiple parts, and each video will be set up to cover a very specific set of topics. There will be several videos created to cover each topic appropriately, but I do not yet know how many there will be at this time. It all depends on how segmented I choose to make them. In this particular video, I will be describing what a sidekick is, what are their limitations, cover how they are made, and who can control them. So let's get started. What is a sidekick? A sidekick is a special NPC that is created by a dungeon master to supplement the player party with a different type of controllable character. These can include anything from a cook or squire all the way through to a mage the party just happened to hire to help clear a specific dungeon. There are three variants of sidekick. There is an expert, a spellcaster, or a warrior, and each has their own capabilities that will be covered in future videos. The sidekick can be introduced to the player at any point in time, even starting with the player party at the beginning of a campaign. For instance, a father might be looking for their child who happened to be taken or is lost in some way, shape, or form, and that father wants to accompany the party in the search. This would be the perfect example of a sidekick. Maybe they're a warrior by nature. We don't know. Sidekicks can come and go, they can be killed, and they can take actions much like any other party member in the group. And that makes this sidekick character, if you will, a very complementary character to introduce into a party or to include in a party as required. Additionally, the sidekick system simplifies the process of creating an NPC-like character, and I suspect we'll see this toolset grow and add new classes and features over time. I also expect to see this feature grow in use because of how simplified the process is of now creating a new NPC character that will be included with a given party. It allows that dungeon master to enrich the campaign, thus making the story far more interesting. But what are their limitations? Well, in relation to Fantasy Grounds, a player is not able to create the sidekick character itself because none of the tooling required is included in the Tasha's Cauldron of Everything Players module shared out by the dungeon master. As a result, it does put a bit more of an onus on the dungeon master to create those characters, but as it does reduce the complexity of character creation, I believe this balances things out from an overall workflow. Another limitation is around their level. A sidekick will level alongside a party, but it's only going to gain levels when the average party level surpasses the current level of the sidekick. This means a sidekick of level 4 won't gain level 5 until the majority of the party has obtained level 5 themselves. For instance, a party of seven players would need four members of at least level five at a minimum before the sidekick themselves could be leveled up. Additionally, a sidekick will always start at the average level of the party if they are being invited to join the party at a given point. For example, a level two party will gain a level two sidekick, while a level 12 party will gain a level 12 sidekick when they join the party. Unlike a player class, the sidekick does not provide any subclass or class specializations, and there are currently only three sidekick classes that you can choose from at the time of this recording. So how do you go about creating a sidekick? Within the Fantasy Grounds Character Wizard, you do have the ability to choose the Expert, Spellcaster, or Warrior classes directly from the class selection, which means you can use the rest of this particular Character Wizard to actually go through and choose the race, set up their stats, select one of their classes, create a background, and then fill and populate their spells and inventory. And you'll see that process in action when I go through and create each of the types of sidekicks that we can actually have. As a result, however, it is now very easy to build multiple sidekicks and prepare them for your party in advance of when you think you might need to actually have them join that party, if they're invited, that is. However, if you were not using Fantasy Grounds to create the sidekick, the Dungeon Master would simply have to go through and create one much like a player would creating their own character. That includes rolling ability scores, choosing the race, background, and sidekick class of the character, setting up all of your stats, including saving throw, skill, attack, and damage modifiers, 
selecting your equipment, and finally choosing spells if the Psychic class provides them. As a result, it will take a little longer to create manually, but it is still possible to do, and Tasha's Cauldron of Everything provides everything needed in order to create the Psychic character. No matter which method you choose, this gives you, the Dungeon Master, the flexibility to go into as much detail as you would like. However, if you are creating this character on behalf of a player, I would highly recommend you include that player in all of the decisions around the character themselves so that they're going to be happy with being able to play that character. And that leads me into who can actually control a sidekick. Well, to be honest, a sidekick can be controlled by anyone, be it a player who's actually using the sidekick as their main character or alongside their own existing character. The entire party can jointly control a sidekick, though passing that particular character's sheet around within Fantasy Grounds will require a little bit of work, but it's not overly difficult to do. The player currently controlling the sidekick would simply release the character, and the DM would need to clear existing ownership of that character, but then it can be selected out of the PC's selection window once that happens. This will allow the party to transition control in the event a sidekick is switching from following one particular player or character around to work with another player or character on some other task or scouting run, for example. And finally, the Dungeon Master themselves can control the sidekick, which will add a bit of work for that Dungeon Master, but it is doable with a little bit of practice. Before I move on to the next video, I would like to go over a few comments I have specific to the sidekick and its introduction within Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. My first comment is that I love the concept of the sidekick from a point of view of a Dungeon Master because it makes the whole process of creating an interactive NPC character far easier, but at the same time, it is more robust. It is encouraging you to spend time in creating that particular character and flesh out some of the things you normally might not do if you're using the older methods, such as more details in the background or personality, in a similar way that a player would actually add that information to their character. This will give that NPC character far more life and potentially allow the party to better bond with him or her and care for that character much like they would with their own. It also has the potential to add a new dynamic to the party that you could really only hint at with older methods used to create NPC characters in the past. But don't get me wrong, those older methods still exist and I still see a use for them within Dungeons & Dragons. I don't see them going away in any way, shape, or form, and there is no requirement for a Dungeon Master to use the sidekick process of creating NPCs. So this really is just adding an additional level of flexibility and giving the Dungeon Master a new tool in their toolbox, if you will, when it comes to creating NPC characters. I do feel that its class options are a little bit lacking, but that might change over time as new supplements come out and potentially introduce new options for the sidekicks. So I don't see this as a negative, just something that has a lot of potential to grow in. But other than that, I am truly looking forward to making use of this feature in future campaigns that I am working on. And that is going to be the end of this video. I hope you found this information useful, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thank you very much. I wish to thank you for taking the time to watch this particular video. I hope you found it informative and useful to familiarizing yourself with Fantasy Grounds in general and that you had fun in the process. If you found the video useful and you liked the content of the particular video, go ahead and click that like button to let me know. And if you have any questions specific to the topic covered by this particular video or just have some comments in general, please feel free to post something in the comments section. I will do my best to respond to any questions that are asked. Additionally, I do release content quite regularly, and it's generally specific to Fantasy Grounds or 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons at this time. So if you'd like to be notified when new videos come out, go ahead and subscribe and click the notification bell to ensure that notification is sent to you when I release a new video.